We'd like to welcome you to our five o'clock class today given by Nancy Busby, and we'd like to thank her for all the time she spends in preparation and sharing the expertise she's acquired over years of experience in family history with us today and her knowledge about ancestry. Hi, everybody. Welcome to tonight's class. I am glad to see so many of you here tonight. And today I'm going to be going over ancestry part one getting to know Ancestry, going over the menus and some of the structure and how to navigate around in that, that program. This is the first of four beginning classes. Um, so we'll do the menu overview this week. And next week, I believe I'm on the schedule at the same time to do the next class, navigating from the tree to the summary card and profile page. So, just a brief overview, what is Ancestry? So Ancestry is a private family tree that you can create with an account through Ancestry. And you can start with a free account if you choose to, but definitely if you get a paid membership, that is required to make the most of all of the resources that are out there. Let's take a look at the home menu now. This is the home page for Ancestry. Once you get signed in, this is what you'll see. And if you ever navigate away from the home page, you can just click on the, the menu at the top left on the home button. And also anytime you see that Ancestry icon next to it, that will return you back to this page as well. If you take a look over on the right-hand side at the top, you'll see a little bell icon, and that is where notifications are located. They also have an icon for you to see when you have hints available for your tree. As you build it, they'll, they'll generate hints for you to take a look at and see if they are a match with your family. There's another icon next to that for messages. You can email back and forth with other, with other um, members of Ancestry through this platform. So you can send and receive messages to, to individuals about their tree or questions that you might have. Over to the right of that is uh, my profile. So I've got a picture on there. You can upload a picture if you choose, and it will have your, your username that, that you are known by and seen by everybody else out there on, on the Ancestry group. This is also where your account settings are and your sign out. And the far right is where you can toggle between English and Spanish. If you want to see the website in Spanish, that is available as well. Okay, so right here in the middle at the top, you'll see it says, hi, Nancy. So it's welcoming me. And there is a little, I've got a little red box drawn on a, on a down arrow. And if you click on that down arrow, it is going to reveal the different trees that I have on my account. So I've set up three different trees that you're seeing here. And the one that is in bold with a check mark, that's the one that I'm seeing on this homepage right now. If I wanted to change between the trees and have my focus be on one tree or on a different tree, then I can select that different tree and the homepage hints and information that shows up there would be oriented toward the information that I have on that tree. And also, if you scroll down on the right-hand side, this is a question I get quite quite often, um, you'll see your shoebox. And the shoebox is when you save documents that you find on Ancestry, you can save those to a shoebox. And then it seems to, seems to be a mystery how to get there. I'm just going to drag my, my live screen over here. If you scroll down, it's over on the right-hand side under Tools and Resources. You'll see it says shoebox right there. You click on that and it lists all the records that you have saved from Ancestry to take a look at. Next, we're going to take a look at the trees menu so you can get familiar with what that looks like. Each of these menu items have a pull down screen, a pull down menu. So when you click on that, you'll see the trees that you have associated with your account there listed. And also, if you've been invited to view someone else's tree, that will also show up on this list. You can create and manage trees from here. Um, the Learning Hub 
where you can find out more information about how to use Ancestry and doing family history and also Story Scout, which will take a look at those. Someone had a question I, I noticed here over in the chat, which I'll go ahead and pause and answer. Kathleen asked, is the shoe box like the source box in Family Search? And yes, it is. And she wanted to know, do you attach these sources to each person? And the answer to that is yes, you can. You're not required to attach them immediately when you save them, you can go back and do that or you can do it right at, right at the time when you find the record. I, I do go into kind of a deep dive in that in one of the future classes, but those are those are great, great questions. Thank you. Okay, so if I were to click on the top tree, the Busby Tally family tree in this case, if I click on that, it's going to take me to a view of my family tree. And you'll see I'm over here on the left in the number one position. And then my tree just branches out from there. And again, we'll do, I, I do a deep dive into the family tree and looking at people's profile pages in one of the future, future classes too. So this is just to get you to the tree so you know where you're at. This is where you can add people. It's a great thing to start exploring and adding to your tree if you're just starting out. And hopefully you can attend one of, the, one of these future classes where I go into a little more detail with that. Okay, so going back to, to the tree menu, click, uh, clicking on any of these trees will take me to a view of their tree, just like I just showed you. The next item is to create and manage trees. So when you click on that, it's going to take you to this window where you'll see two, two menu items at the top, my trees and trees shared with me. My trees is going to list the trees that you have created. There are a variety of reasons why you might want to have multiple trees. For instance, I've got one that says Loker family tree in Virginia. This is a tree that I'm doing some research on. I don't have a whole lot of individuals on the tree. It's not my entire family tree, but it's, it's, a, um, it's a family I'm doing some research on that I'm, not, I'm still trying to figure out how or if they fit in with my family. So that's one reason that, that you might create a, a separate or different tree. Um, some people that I know choose to do one side of their family on, a, on an individual tree and, a, and another branch of their family on a totally different tree. So really you just kind of use that to your, to your best advantage as you use the program. You can also create a new tree from here that's located on the bottom. You can upload a GEDCOM file to create a new tree from an existing GEDCOM, GEDCOM file. And you can also... Um, go into tree settings from here and adjust, you know, what kind of hints you're getting, um, who can view the tree, that kind of thing. If you're sharing it with someone else, you can manage all that there. And the next tab, tree shared with me, is going to show you um, the name of the tree. Um, you can click on it to go to it. And it also tells my role. You'll notice that's one of the items here. And I am a guest, and it, then it tells who the the um, ancestry member is who owns that tree. And I can choose to remove this from this tree from my list if I'm done looking at it, or I can get to my to that tree from here as well. Next, we'll take a look at the Family History Learning Hub. This is a great resource for really, I would say, anybody at any, any level of, of expertise. Um, when you click on that, it takes you to this, this page um, where you can, um, you see they, at the top, they start out with church records. And you can also um, scroll down and they'll, they'll always have some featured articles that, that you can read, um, things that they feel like are, you know, kind of important, or maybe they're new information that they've put out there, articles that have been written that tell you about different different categories and topics that you might be interested in. And if you scroll down even farther on that page, you'll see they've got some getting started with family history articles and so links to any of these topics that you can click on and take a look at. So if I, if I go to the Learning Hub here, 
kind of come down here to the bottom. For instance, I could I could um, say I want to just search and and learn about the Social Security Death Index. So you can click on that, and it will take you to a page that that tells you more information about that collection and tips for searching, just some different ideas of how to use that record. And then they have specific related articles to that topic at the bottom of that page. So it's a great place to, to explore and learn about the collections that are in Ancestry and available to you. You'll see over here, they have you know things like the Buffalo Soldiers, Oklahoma Land Rush. So if you have family that were involved in any, any of those type of historical events, it might be interesting to see what records are available to you. And at the very bottom of this page, it also is going to talk about DNA and take you to some links where you can learn more about um, DNA through Ancestry. The next item that you'll see under the, under the tree tab is Story Scout. So when you click on Story Scout, if you haven't been there before, if that's your first time clicking on it, it will probably prompt you to enter that particular feature. Um, so you just click on Take Me to My Stories. And it will take you into where you can see it. what it does is it takes the specific people that you have on your tree and the information that you've entered about them. And it's going to create some, some stories linking historical events to those people in the time frame that they lived in. And you can learn more about the areas they live, lived in, the, the types of historical events that were going on when that ancestor was alive. And it can, it can be a fun one to explore as well. So if you haven't taken a look at Story Scout yet, I encourage you to do that and see what it can, can tell you about your ancestors. Okay, next we'll go over the search menu. So the search menu is over here on the left, right next to trees. You'll also notice on the home menu to the right, you have your, your basic search where you can enter the name of a person, first name, last name, estimated birth year and location. If you click on advanced search, it's going to take you to a screen where if you've been an ancestry before, you that's where you're going to see the all of the different options that you can enter in a search for an individual. But anyway, let's go over the menu, the pull down menu for search. So when you click on that, you'll see um, several categories that they have. Really it's quick links to because there are more collections than what they list in their pull down. But these are the ones they feel are the most commonly used. So this, this just gives you a quick link to all of these. I'll just go through them really quickly so you can see what, what happens when you when you enter those. So all collections is going to take you to this, it's the same thing as advanced search that was on the right hand side of the home menu. But this is going to allow you to enter any information that you have about your ancestor, their relationships with parents, siblings, spouse, children, all of those things. Um, so make sure you scroll up and down on this page. You'll want to definitely scroll down because part of the search as you scroll down is um, they also have a map, which I think it can be really, really helpful as you go through looking for certain ancestors. So you're going to you're going to see maps from all over the world that you can click between. So depending on where your ancestor is from, might depend on where you want to look. And what this is going to inform you about is what kind of collections are in these different countries. So in Peru, they have five collections. Bolivia, there are three. Guyana, there are two. Paraguay, there are three. You can just move around the map. You can also pan back and forth. So it can be kind of interesting that if you if you if there's a specific place that you want to take a look at, um, let's say you want to look in the Isle of Man and see what's there. You can click on it and it's going to pull up a list of the different collection categories. So sometimes I'm looking for a very specific kind of record in a very specific area. And this is kind of a quick way to get to a list of the types of records and collections that are available. And here you can see the different census records, for instance, and it tells you how many thousands of specific entries are available 
um, from those different years on their census records, et cetera. As you scroll through, you can, can see, and you can do this with any, any locality in the world to see what Ancestry has available in their collections for, for that locality. So that is, that is a, a feature that I really like to use and um, hopefully can be very helpful for you as well. And, and always, always take a look at the right-hand panel, just to the right. It's going to get very specific with like photos and maps, um, any special collections that might be unique to certain areas, that kind of thing. So don't just limit yourself by filling in what you already know. Take a look at what collections are available in the locality that you're doing your search in. The next one is going to take you to the census and voters list. Again, you know, each of these are very similar. It just takes you to a page where you're going to enter the information that you know about this person, and it will search those that specific kind of collection instead of doing a broad search across all collections. So if you know you're looking for a census, like, okay, for instance, sometimes I will be looking at, at a certain person on my family tree, and I'll notice, oh, hey, this person has, um, we've got a census record for 1850, 1860, and 1880, but I'm I'm missing that family in the 1870 census. I want to do a search specifically for, for that 1870 census. This is a place you can go where you can do a search that's very specific. And they have filters that you can filter out so that you just see a certain certain window of those lists. You can do the same with um, birth, marriage, and death. I, I think that's what the uh, that's the hill that doing family history dies on, right? If you can find your birth, married, birth record, your marriage record, your death record, you're feeling kind of golden there. And everything else you can pack around it to support that information is is icing on the cake. So um, great place to search for just to start your search is to see what records are available for those specific types. The next one down will take you to immigration and travel. And here's where you can fill in any information that you know. Um, perhaps you know the ship that they sailed on. Um, you might know the, the year that they arrived in port or the month, but maybe you're not sure where they're, you know, where exactly which port they came from, but you know where they arrived. So you can start just putting in the information that you know and see what will come up in Ancestry for you. Next, I'll go over public member trees real quickly. Okay, this is where you can search the public member trees. So a little bit about what, what these are and, and how they could possibly be useful to you. So the trees that you saw on my list, those are my trees that I created. When I made those trees or when you make your tree, you can choose if it's going to be public or private. So anything that is a public member tree, someone has decided I want my tree to be public so that Anyone else who has a membership with the Ancestry can see my tree and we can compare notes and we can um, see where our, you know, where our common ancestors are and maybe share information for one another. So these are people who want to collaborate, right? And like my, I have one tree on my list that is private because I'm not trying to collaborate with other, others right now. I'm just trying to do some, some initial research on my own. And when I'm ready to collaborate with others, I might make that tree public. So these are trees voluntarily submitted by people like you and I who are, who are just using, using the uh, Ancestry program. Private trees are trees that Ancestry users have, have um, indicated that they want to only be able to view it by permission. And so they have access to their tree. And um, sometimes you might see a hint come up on a tree that is listed as private. And you won't be able to click through to see the tree, but you can contact the person and let them know, hey, I, I think that your, you know, your, your tree has some information that might be helpful to me. This is, you know, these are the surnames of my family, whatever seems relevant. Then you can ask them if they are willing to share their tree with you. Private member trees, even though you can't initially see them, there is an opportunity to contact people if they have selected to be, you know, to, to message through the Ancestry website. Um, so you can contact people and take a look at their tree. They can change their permissions from time to time. 
But anyway, if you have a desire to have a tree that is not public, just know that you can select private as an option as well. And then there are also photos and documents that are made public that, that are available here as well. Also on this, on this page, um, when you scroll down a little bit on the right there, I think it's kind of random, some of the stuff they have under more help, but it is there. So I will tell you about it. Well, the first one makes a lot of sense. They have uh, free online classes for um, using Member Connect and connecting with other people. And then they have some information about printing. So you can take a class about how to print um, and using My Canvas, which is a uh, feature within Ancestry that you can print to, printing trees or books or that kind of thing. They have introduction to online trees, classes, and how to create a personalized book through My Canvas. And, and it takes all of the information and data that you've input into your tree or imported into your tree and allows you to, to create a book through that. So you can find that here on this member tree site as well. Nancy, Kathleen has a couple of questions. Okay, thank you. Let me go over those questions. I've got them up here now. Is there a limit to the number of trees that you can make? I am not aware of any limit. If you, if you hit one, let me know. <laughs> I think you can create as many trees as you want. Do you feel it is easier to separate your paternal and maternal lines? I personally do not. I, I don't find value in that. I use that as an example because I everyone kind of has a different style and research focus. There are some people who that is helpful to. And so I think you just need to decide for yourself on that. I personally don't. I, I keep them both both together. Do you have more access to collections of the family history libraries opposed to LDS member access at home? So I think the answer to that is yes, because in the family history libraries, when you access Ancestry from there, they, there are no limitations to the records you can see because they have, they have like the max membership, where if you're at home using the membership, every once in a while you'll bump into a collection that you can't view the LDS member access doesn't have 100% of what's on Ancestry available to you. So, but I believe in the Family History Library, it, it will. Does Ancestry have Roman Catholic parish records? I believe they do. My personal research hasn't taken me there a lot, but from what I understand, yes, they do have that available. So, can you have part of your tree public? No, it's, I, it is all or nothing on your tree, on a specific tree, and it's per tree. Would these public versus private be a reason to have multiple trees? Absolutely, yes. That would be one reason. Um, you might, like perhaps on your private tree, you're uploading every picture that you've ever taken or, or have possession of, and maybe you don't want all of those to be public, right? So you might load everything on a private tree, but only have limited documents that maybe you don't want to be public right now. Susan asked, can you, go over, can you go over how to contact them? And I think she was referring to the people that have public or private trees. Is it, is it through a, an email, much like uh, Family yeah, Search? It's, it's through, yeah, it's through the Message Center, um, kind of similar to, to Family Search. And I can, let me, we'll go into this real quick. I'm going to go to this tree that and while, while you're doing that, Nancy, D DNC made a comment at the FHC. She's probably referring to, I don't know if she's referring to all family history. Family history center. Center or family search centers. You have access to international ancestry. Mm -hmm. And since newspapers.com is part of that, you may have access to that also. I'm yeah, not sure. We don't even have access to all parts of newspapers.com. So mm -hmm. I... It, You've probably got to check with every single place and say, okay, what version of Ancestry do you have? Uh, yeah, I would completely agree with that. You, 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 depending on the family history center you're going to or the um, genealogical library, because there are some just public libraries that have access to some of these programs, you would need to, to inquire what they actually have access to. So, And um, Ancestry also has, they own... Um, 
pulled three, which are military records, which is a separate paid paid subscription, but at some family history centers you go to, they might have full access to those records as well. Okay, so anytime you get a hint or you're anywhere that shows that something is associated with someone else's tree, you're going to see their, their member number here or, or their profile name. You can always click on that and say you want to message them. So anytime you click on the hyperlink that's by a, um, another um, user, whether their tree is public or private, it will take you to the message center and you can just start typing your message there. It's, it's internal within Ancestry, so it's not using an external email and it doesn't reveal your email that's associated with the account. You can always choose to, to do that if you want to. Looking at the message center here. See if there's anything in here that I could quickly go to. Yeah, this is taking me to a record, not another tree. But anyway, that that is in a short is a short answer is how you message a person. So it, sometimes those either private or public tree hints will will come up when I'm looking through hints for a person, and I do go over hints and in messaging in a deep dive in one of the other classes too. So hopefully that kind of helps you out. So let's take a look at the military records that are um, the search that's available. And my experience is, well, there are some military records like draft registration, et cetera. There are a variety of things that are available through Ancestry specific, but I have seen it bring up hints for Fold3 which you have to have a separate membership for to view that. But if you go to a family history center or contact your local one, you might be able to find out that they have access to it. And that, that's very worth a worthwhile uh, place to look for military records also. But for the ones that are that are available with, with just your, your basic paid membership, you can go here and put in the information about your ancestor and where they lived and when they were born, when they died, when they served, anything you happen to know and enter that and do a search here. The card catalog is a, a vast catalog of, of all of the resources available within, within Ancestry. So when you click on that, it's going to take you to the, the card catalog proper, where it just has all of the different collections. And you can narrow down the, the view. You can see here there were 33,000 collections within the card catalog, just on everything that they have. It's, it's a fun one to explore as well. I'm going to go ahead and go to that on, as, a live, as a live version of it. Some of the things that you can, can look at. So if you're a person who's, who's always kind of looking to see what's new, what have they added, you can come here and say, I want to, I want to sort by the date things were updated. So it's going to pop everything that's new or has had an update things added to it, to the top of the list. So you can, you can see all of, the, all of the newest collections that have been added. You can sort by record count. So it's going to sort by how many hundreds of thousands or millions of records are available. I'm not sure how that would be helpful, but they have it. <laughs> um, you can also sort by collection title if you want to scroll through and find a specific record you're looking for. You can filter by date, by locality. As you open these, you can drill down to spe specific countries and um, states or provinces, depending on how that country is, is located. And it's going to narrow that search in that card catalog just to South Korea. It, and then it also tells you under the filters which type of records you're looking at that are available. The other thing you can do is just type in keywords or title if there's a specific kind of record or a locality that you're hoping to see what's available in that, in that area. Another really powerful search engine there in the card catalog. Okay, I'm going to pause for a question. If you have duplicate family name trees, how can you transfer extra information onto the tree and then delete the additional tree? 
There is no way to merge trees on Ancestry, sadly. People ask that a lot. I've wanted, I have wanted to do that in the past, but you can't. But you can copy information from, from an individual and their information and copy that and insert it into, into a tree. And then after you've gone through that process, you can then delete the other tree. And that's in the settings. So when you when you look at your account settings for the tree, under a tree to manage accounts, you can delete trees there. So that was under the trees tab. Okay, now let's take a look at member search real briefly on the search menu. Here you can go in and search for a member by their name or their username. And you just type it in and hit search, see if something comes up. Because like you'll see, for instance, my name, my username is Nancy Busby 30. I probably picked that because there was another Nancy Busby out there that already had an account. So anyway, if somebody just typed in Nancy Busby, it would probably come up with several of us. And um, anyway. You can take a look at that if you're looking for a specific um, member that somebody who you know already has a tree, maybe. Um, and then you can also search members by by research interest. And you, you um, I, I would think that you know you could put in a surname for your family under the last name. You can also put in a location. It's going to bring up um, members who have research interests in specific areas. Going to go over a few things in the DNA menu now. On that pull down, this is where if you buy a DNA test from Ancestry and you get it in the mail and you need to activate the test, this is where you go to do that. If you want to buy another, te another test for another family member, you can do that here as well. The top six items on this pull down menu are going to be covered in more depth when I do part four of the series, where I talk more about using your ancestry DNA and how to navigate through that. Um, so we won't go over those ones right now, but just know that if you buy a DNA test, this is where you go to activate that test. It's going to ask you to activate it so that your DNA test is associated with your account and your email. So that when you, you'll get an email notification when your test is ready and all that kind of stuff. Okay, um, the help menu next. We can go to the support center if you have any questions. From the support center, you're going to see it's going to open up another tab on your browser. And if you scroll down, you've got all of this stuff to look at that you might have questions about. So I'm going to try to just break it down into bite-sized pieces because there's a little bit of repetitive nature to what's here, I guess, to help make sure you know where to search, which is awesome, right? We like to have help. <laughs> so if you need any help or assistance with your Ancestry account, it's got a few things listed in here and view all because that's not all they have. They also list DNA, questions that you might have about DNA questions you might have about your family tree, whether it's navigating or looking at hints or printing, et cetera. And also questions you might have about using your mobile device. Ancestry does have an app that you can download on your phone. So if you have any questions about, about using that, you can find them here. Now, if you look down below that, you've got six little different colored icons running across the bottom. Trees, search, DNA, this is going to take you to the same place. If you click here or click up above your account, again, this is a repeat of what's on the top left. Mobile device, goes along with what's already up there. And any questions you may have about setting privacies on your account, you can go here if you need to search for quick answers online before you reach out to somebody in person. So I'm going to click on trees now, show you what you get there. So when you click on one of those icons or one of those topics, it's going to open up another window in your in your browser, another uh, menu, or excuse me, another another tab in your browser, and you're going to see that you get a new menu item that you didn't see before, running along the top support topics. 
And when you click on that, it gives you six different topics. Hope you're seeing a theme here. There were six icons before, and now you've got six items on that pull-down menu. And if you're paying close attention, you're right. They're the same. But this is just another way to get to them. Once you've already clicked into one or the other, you can navigate between them from the support tab without having to go back again to the Ancestry support page. So trees, search, DNA, count, mobile, privacy. I feel like they do a pretty good job of answering questions for you, um, allowing you to search specific questions. Now let's take a look at the community that's available in Ancestry. So the Ancestry community, it's kind of broken up into two different different silos or categories, um, collaborating with others and contributing to Ancestry and the information that they have available for everybody. So under collaborate, from this menu tab, you can take a look at public member trees, obviously. that's Public trees are where people go to interact with one another and uh, Ancestry is going to see your person on the tree and your same person on another tree that has matching information. And it's it's going to let you know, hey, there's another tree that has a common person. Do you, you know, and then you have an opportunity to collaborate with them. The member directory, finding other people with similar interests, member profile, and message boards. So there are multiple ways to get to the same thing within Ancestry. This just kind of sets you up to where things are so you can decide which avenue works best for you. Um, you can also contribute through Findergrave. Ancestry owns Findergrave if you've ever used that before. I was on vacation at my sister's last summer and she lives in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. And we went to some local cemeteries and I pulled up Findergrave and there were individuals who had requested that someone take a picture of a headstone at a cemetery. And we were able to go around and take pictures of headstones and post them on Findergrave and notify that person that somebody had upload their picture. So it's kind of a fun thing to do if you, um, if you like hanging around cemeteries like like me, <laughs> for the right, all the right reasons though, and help out other people. So see if there's anything available in your area. Go into your Find a Grave account and see if anyone has made a request locally to you. And it also has a place for you to share any success stories that you have. Maybe you found family through DNA. Maybe you found a record on Ancestry that you had been searching and searching for, they would love to hear from you. Okay, message boards. This is where people who are searching very specific places or family surnames can go to collaborate and talk back and forth to one another. And I'm going to pull up my live link for that and just kind of show you show you a couple of things. So I could I could search boards that say a lot of my family's in Alabama. And I see that there are over 400,000 different message boards with that very generic name of Alabama. But maybe I want to say Cherokee County. See if anything comes up there. Now it's narrowed it down to 6,000 message boards. Well, you know, you, I, I think you get the idea. You can... You can keep entering information to narrow down the window of what you want, or you can just scan through, and take a look at the different message boards that are out there. Like this one is specific to the family of William Mark Young. I could, if that person is in my tree, I could click on it and see what information people are sharing back and forth about doing research in that in that area. I could put a specific city, you know, and and find message boards where other people are sharing research information they've done about specific locales or people. Hire an expert if you are hitting brick walls left and right on a certain line and you feel like it's time to hire somebody else, Ancestry has that available. If you click on it, it's going to take you to a page where you can uh, get an, an estimate from them and hire someone to help you out with their research. And then I'd like to go over the extras menu next. Okay, on the extras tab, there are a few things here that are paid services that are offered through Ancestry. I'm going to let you explore these on your own if you are interested in printing books and seeing what they have available, hiring a, a professional, or doing any travel, genealogy travel to, to, I don't know, Ireland or 
maybe Germany. You can see what, what Ancestry has organized and put together. See if that's something you're interested in doing. Um, you can download the app to your phone. When you click on that, it's going to take you to a page that lets you download from Google Play, Apple Store, or Amazon. So you can have that on your phone. And we also have Ancestry Academy. Okay, in Ancestry Academy, these are really short videos that will teach you about doing family history. And they have hundreds of categories, hundreds and hundreds of videos to watch. If you take a look on the top right, it actually has a sign-in, and that will prompt you to create a username and password. And the advantage that I've seen to doing that, it, it keeps track of what you've already watched. And um, you can also make a list of things that you're interested in watching. So when you're looking at the videos in Ancestry Academy, you can go through and say, oh, I, I want to add these five things to my list. I'll go watch them when I have time. So that kind of keeps a list of those videos for you. And here's the ones that I haven't finished watching yet that I need to continue on. And there's my list. Okay, if you want to purchase a membership for someone, you can do that from the Extras tab. And when you click on that, it should take you to this page that tells you the different memberships that are available. You, so you can purchase these for other family members or friends if you're interested in that. And Ancestry Lab is, it's not somewhere I go real often, but if it's the kind of thing that you're very interested in, it's whenever Ancestry is running a beta of you know, some upgrade they're going to be making in the future, this is where you, you go to take a look. And if there is a beta available, this is where you can click to participate in that and maybe see you know the new homepage or something that maybe they're not gonna release for several months, but they need people to go in and kind of use it and figure out the bugs before they release it out to the public. Okay, on the, uh, the, the black tab going across the menu board on the very top, you'll also see hire an expert. This is the same thing you see in extras for a pro genealogist. It's going to take you to the same place to hire a genealogist to help you out. Notifications is up here on the right. These are notifications that are messages from Ancestry, letting you know, we think we found somebody or you ought to go into Storymaker Studio today. There are any messages that Ancestry wants to take you. You have a new trait in your DNA. So that's what you'll find there. The next icon over is the hints menu. This is going to pull down the most recent hints that were available, records that Ancestry has, their little, I don't know, their, their bots have gone through, <laughs> found all these hints based on the information you've entered on your tree. When you click on see all recent hints in, is going to bring up my three trees. So I can say, oh, I want to see the hints for the Loker family tree. So I can select that one if I want to see the hints from a specific tree versus any other. And when you click into it, it's going to have all of your hints. And then you can sort by, I've got 12,000 hints. If anybody out there has cleared all of their hints from Ancestry, I want to meet you because... <laughs> I, all, I seem to, it's always generating hints for me to look at, but I can sort through and look at just records or just photos, just stories. This is one place you can see um, hints from other member trees. So if you go to the hints tab and click on all the hints, you can go to member trees and see which member trees have things in common with you. And they've recently out of the 1950 census. And the icon to the right of that is the Messages tab. So this is where you're going to go to see all the messages that are available, where you go to read the messages. If you've been notified that you have a new message, their names will be over here on the left. You can click them. It will bring up the entire thread of messages. And then on the right, it tells you who that person is, how you're related to them, what trees they have out there. Anyway, just a little bit about them. You can always click on their name if you want to see more about them, um, or you can continue your message from there too. Profiles and settings. Okay, this is on the top right. This is, there are three things you can do here. You can view your profile. This is where you're going to change any 
anything about you personally that's that is in there. You can also figure out your account settings and sign out. So your profile is going to take you to this page that tells all about you and you can edit any of this. It's telling me that I have not quite completed everything they'd like to know me in my profile and that's okay. You you give them the information you're comfortable with giving them. And it just tells a little bit about, about you and what my trees are that I have, how many people I have on the tree, how many records, et cetera, are attached. My photo gallery is here. Okay, account settings. This is where you're going to, so um, I think you there was a question about uh, emails, like are you gonna get a notification? I think this is where you go to set your preferences for communications and emails that you get from Ancestry. Um, so anyway, this is where your username, your email, your password. Um, if you want to set up two-step verification for security, you can turn that on. Settings about your DNA, if your profile is public or not. Any settings that have to do with your trees, if they're shared, if they're private or they're public. If you want to change the name of your tree, all that you can do here in settings. And last of all, this is where you sign out from your account, which, you know, when you're at home, do what you want. But just remember, when you're on a public computer in a, in a family history library somewhere, make sure you sign out of your account when you're done there. And then when you sign out, it just pops you right back to the entry page. So we've, we've gone over everything with, on, the, on the menus, the pull-down menus. Just kind of round through them all. Sometimes when you get into a program and you're kind of new to it, you're not sure where to find things. So hopefully this this just oriented you to what's available out there and, and to get you started and navigating around an ancestry. Or maybe if you're an expert, maybe there's a few things that you haven't looked at recently that you can go explore some more. And next week, we'll do a, I'll do a deep dive into navigating from the tree to the summary card and the profile page. Thanks, everybody. I think we had a few questions, but this is the end of the formal presentation. And I will now address some of the questions that I didn't get to answer. Okay, Judith, when I clicked the support button like you did, it did not bring up the button on the ribbon like yours. Okay, let's take a look at that. Under help, sorry, support center. Okay, so it should open up another tab like that. And then I have the support topics here. I think this is what you're looking for. So I'm not sure why it wouldn't be opening for you because it's opening when I click on it. If your question is different, then add that to the bottom of the, of the list. So when I click on support topics, I can see all the different, when I scroll down, I can see all of these different ones I can click on. Okay, the next one, does, does the hints give you information on anyone in your tree or can you separate out the hints of the people who may be, re who may be related but not yet in your tree? Okay, the general hints, this is generally giving hints for any and everyone that it's combing through. The way to look at hints for a specific person is to go to their profile page. So for instance, if I went to this guy's page here, so from the tree, you wanna to go to their person page. And from here, I can see Hence, they're specific to that person. I hope that answers your question. In terms of looking at the general hints, so yes, you can filter by name. I thought you could, but I just wanted to show you. So it looks like I could filter by name and say, I only want to see the hints for the Busby family. And then it's going to narrow that from 600 hints to 30 within this list. So there's a couple of ways to look at person-specific or family-specific hints. Nancy, thank right. you again. It was wonderful, and you did a great job. Thank you for your time.